Ah, uh, YouTube, team keep it clean, what's going on, it's Engraven here with another video And in this video I'm here to share my post-game thoughts from the game that we all watched between the Ravens and the Rams And this loss, this, this was a painful one right here It was a painful one because in this game, going into this game, I felt the exact same way that I did about the Packers game. I just knew for sure that the Ravens, despite being down so many people, despite people being on the COVID list, people being injured, missing this guy and that guy, I just knew the Ravens were going to pull it out. I knew they were going to win. I knew it. But And, and they, they had so many opportunities and they came so close. But they came up short. Um, and that has been pretty much the theme of the Ravens this year, uh, especially on the, the back half of the year. Um, and a lot without Lamar Jackson, they've just come up short. And it, it, it's very unfortunate. And it, and it has been for a number of reasons. Uh, and we can go over all of them later on. But that has been uh, what it's been for these past this past month and change and just ugh, yuck. Anyway. And the Ravens find themselves at 8-8 eight and eight right now. Now, one thing that we do a lot of here on here is question. One of our biggest issues is, is some of the decision making that coaches will do. But it's crazy because there was a huge like question mark even before the game even started. Because I was wondering, and I know a lot of other people were, we were like, oh man, last week, James Froche has his best game ever. As a professional football player for the Baltimore Ravens. Oh, man. He had, what, seven catches for 76 yards, something like that? It's like, okay, let's go, Prochet. Ooh, man. Next week? Oh, yeah, we're going to need him. Hollywood ain't practiced all week. Is he going to play? We're not sure. But, oh, Hollywood is active. But James Prochet is not? What? Why? I just, I didn't understand that at all. And even with Sammy Watkins, Sammy Watkins was active too. But Sammy Watkins really wasn't active. T Tylen Wallace had more snaps than Sammy Watkins. So it's, I just, bef so before the game even started, there were big question marks like why? But anyway, uh, going into the game, shout out to the defense. The defense, they did everything that they possibly could in order to secure a victory. Um, I was wondering where Chris Westry was, but they were like, hey, nope, Kevon Seymour, you up. And you really going to be up because he was he was active all game. He was active all game. Saw some passes come his way. He made some tackles, made some key, key, key plays, um, but it just didn't end up being enough. Uh, Jimmy Smith, oh, man, favorite play from Jimmy Smith. I'm sure it was all y'all's favorite play, too. I think it was on like uh, on the, the Rams' last offensive drive uh, where he, I think it was maybe third and like two, third and short, third and crazy short, and it looked like they, they handed the ball off to their running back, and it looked like, oh boy, oh, whoop, touchdown. It looked like, but Jimmy Smith, he turned into a defensive end, and he made that tackle in the backfield. I was like, whoa, Jimmy, let's go. It was crazy, man. Oh, uh, but it, it ended up being not even necessarily for nothing, but just Odell Beckham Jr. He made that crazy catch on fourth down on Tay-Tay. Shout out to Tay-Tay because he was having a good game because it, he was quiet. He was quiet. I didn't even really know he was playing. He was so quiet. Didn't hear anything from him, from his side, from whoever he was covering. Uh, so shout out to him. Um, but, yeah, on that last drive, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. caught the, the first down pass. Uh, and then he caught the touchdown. Then he said, oh, I think I got the bird flu. Oh, Odell Beckham Jr., Joe Mixon. Mm. And boys, they, they, they brought it. But anyway, uh, and, and Odell Beckham Jr. said, the thing about the defense, Odell Beckham Jr. was quiet all game long. You ain't hear a peep out of Odell Beckham. Nothing. You hear a peep out of him. Then all of a sudden, game on the line. They're like, oh, okay, we, we got you, Odell. And he did his thing. So, but Ravens defense, man, they, they did more than enough to win. Picks, they were like, hey, offense, y'all not going to score any touchdowns? We got y'all. We'll spot y'all a touchdown. We, we got it. We got it. 
Chuck Clark with the beautiful pick six. And it's crazy because Matt Stafford, he spread him out. And Chuck Clark, you saw Chuck Clark changing the play. You saw him look back. He was changing the play. He gave Ravens defense, uh, defensive players a little signal, and he was switching it up. So he must have knew, known what was coming because that pick six was perfect. It was perfect. It wasn't no crazy pick six where he had to make some crazy interception. And No, he read that. He read that like a book. Well, like an interesting book, because somebody might look at a book and then I ain't reading this. But no, Chuck Clark read it like an interesting book and took it to the house. Beautiful. And then the very next drive, the very next drive for uh, the Raven, I mean the Rams offense, Matt Stafford, he was like, man, yeah, Odell got to be down there somewhere. And Matt Stafford threw up one of them little trust balls. That's what you call those. Matt Stafford obviously got big trust for Odell Beckham Jr. And it was one of those, uh, those trust balls that Matt Stafford threw to Odell Beckham Jr. in his first game as a Ram, I think against the 49ers, and it was the same result. It was like two, three people on him, and I think Jimmy Ward ended up catching the interception. I forgot who it was, but then it was the same thing in this game. There were three people on him. Matt Stafford said, oh, okay, launch it downfield. Chuck Clark, he was doing his best Ed Reed impersonation yesterday, and he got another pick. And then, of course, later on in the game, when the Rams are driving, their offense is moving, they're going down the field, it's like, oh, man, come on. Well, I guess they're getting ready to score. Hopefully we hold them to three, but eh, they get a touchdown. Well, here we go. Rams offense is driving, 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 driving. Then all of a sudden, Bowser does this flip sack. Flip sack strip, as a matter of fact, because he stripped the ball out of Matt Stafford's hand. Justin Houston recovers. It's like, oh, let's go, baby. But field goals are not going to get it done. They're not going to get it done. And that's all that the Ravens offense could produce yesterday was field goals. And it was very unfortunate, and it ended up being to their demise that they just could not, did not score any offensive touchdowns. And all they would have needed to score would just have been just, just even if they just would have got one, just one, just one. Then that would have put them in good position to have won the game. It would have been in better position to win the game. Wouldn't have necessarily been the end all be all, but it would have helped out a lot. But they didn't get not one. And it's just been um, it's been pretty frustrating. Uh, and I think this this is another game that sort of killed a lot of the uh, the Lamar Huntley stuff that people were trying to build up. But we will talk about that later. That's not important right now. Uh, but Huntley in this game, he overall he was doing a good job. And it, the, the saddest part about it was that. The uh, and, and see, somebody yesterday we had there was a Twitter space, and somebody said it perfectly. I forgot who it was, but they said it so perfectly. They said, Greg Roman from the 20 to the 20, straight. Oh, yeah, he, he could do his thing, he can move the ball from the 20 to the 20, he can move the ball, but inside that red zone, that's where the problem is, that's where the issues lie. Um, yesterday, the Ravens showed that they can move the ball all day. They can move the ball on this Rams defense. They were not scared of this Rams defense. Rams defense did make some plays now. There were some guys that came in untouched for sacks. There were some guys that barely got touched and they got sacks. Um, but they Ravens showed that they could move the ball. But when it came to crunch time, when it came to delivering, where it mattered the most, field goals. Now, Justin Tucker, it was nice to see him. It was a beautiful thing to see him. And it was like, oh, we, he's still on the team? What? What? Really? Because I'm, I'm just so used to that. I'm so used to seeing that. And Justin Tucker like, oh, well, I'm here, guys. So it was nice to see him being used. But we would just wish that on just one of those drives, at least. Obviously, we wish more. We wish every drive is a touchdown, really. But just on one of those drives, that it could have been uh, them getting in the end zone. And... um. Because that, that just would have changed so much, like, so fast, too. Uh, now, with Tyler Huntley, I know there was a play where he missed Mark Andrews when Jalen Ramsey was on Mark Andrews. And 
but he got he got pressured. He got pressured. There was another play where he uh he missed a wide open Devin Duvernay for a touchdown, but he got pressured. He got pressured. It's pressure all in all in his face, man. And when there's pressure all in your face, it's it's, it's hard to make a play like that. Now I um I take you to the situational situational moment of the game where the Rams they went up after Odell Beckham Jr. after he caught the bird flu. Then they and they went for two. They went for two. Because they wanted to be up by seven. But, um, oh, it was such a, oh, no, no, not up by seven. They wanted to be up by three. That's what it was. Um, but Tony Jefferson, oof. It's like you just you just know he's going to get an extension this year. My guy JT said Tony Jefferson should probably take that um take over that Anthony Levine role. Because Anthony Levine, he probably won't be back. But I've been saying that for the past two years. Every time they do the roster, and they, Anthony Levine keeps, com- keeps on coming back. Because, you know, that's cold cap, no cap. Everybody loves Anthony Levine, but um, we'll see how this, this offseason goes. But anyway, on that, I love the design of that two-point conversion, too. I, I loved it. I was like, oh, wow, this is, that's pretty creative. That is pretty creative because, and, and especially, get this, on that final drive, who was the focal point of that final drive? I, well, especially for the last couple of plays, some clutch plays. It was Odell Beckham Jr. So, Unlike the Ravens, with their two-point conversion plays, especially when Mark Andrews was the focal point of the final drive, he scored a touchdown, he's got all these crazy catches. The Ravens, they go right back to him for the two-point conversion. But the Rams, they were like, ah, hmm, no, 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 we got this. Odell Beckham Jr., he caught this fourth, fourth and fourth and five. He caught this conversion on fourth down. He caught the touchdown that gave us a, a, a lead. And you know what? Ravens, they probably going to be watching him extra on this two-point conversion. Let's make it like it's going to him, but uh, nope. It's not for him. I I love the design of that two-point conversion, but I love Tony Jefferson, his effort that much more. Because they threw the ball to Odell Beckham Jr., and he pitched it to... uh, so whoever the running back was, I forget who it was, but um, Tony Jefferson just made a crazy play, crazy play to stop him. Uh, but then on offense, see, this is, this is where it was like, like, hold up, like, what's going on? We had one timeout, and Tyler Huntley, he was like, normally, okay, we appreciate when he's taking the check, the, the check downs and taking the short passes and getting the ball out quick. But this was bad situational awareness by him um, and, and the Ravens because the short pass, this was not time for the short passes. You had, I think, 55 seconds left, 55 seconds left and one timeout. And no, like it was like, whoa, what, why are we doing all this short stuff? What's going on with that? That was just, and I, it, it was just so weird seeing that because it's like, are they... Are they even gonna try? Because they like it'll be like a five yard pass, a little six yard pass, and then it end up being like fourth and one. And was, then he threw the little five yard pass and Mark Andrews, and it's just it was all this short stuff. And then at the very end, the last play, it's like I, I understood it. Um, I was hoping that all right, maybe you do like a hail mary or some hopeful pass interference, uh, cause. One of those plays like that they ran like 49, the way the 49ers ran it the other night, um, who were they playing against? Was it the Titans? I think it was the, yeah, 49ers Titans game. The way the 49ers ran it the other night, it was like, oh, okay, maybe. But Ray, I, I don't ever expect Ravens to be successful with a play like that. Like the Music City Miracle, I, I just, I don't expect that because that's, it's the Ravens. It's, it's the Ravens. Ravens ain't this crazy creative offense or anything like that. that that's just not them that's not their style that's not the way they get down so I was hoping for a Hail Mary but then as time kept going on the play clock and they even got a delay a game they even got a delay a game uh on that last like the, I think the second to last play uh so it was like man then there was another delay a game early on um where it changed I think Tyler Huntley was saying that they, he feel like they got okie doked by the refs on that delay of game where it was like third and four and it changed to third and nine, something like that. Uh, then Alejandro Villanueva, he was getting ready to pull, it looks like, and that was the, the obvious uh, false start. 
And oh, the, then there was the, the interception the, with the miscommunication from Tyler Huntley and Hollywood, um, where they just they just not in sync like that, man. They not in sync like that. Um, but it wasn't all bad uh, because one thing that I liked about Tyler Huntley is again early on in the game and my, minus that last drive. But a thing that I mean, it's, it's something that we always liked about Tyler Huntley. What we've seen. Is that the, the quick decisions, the quick decisions and those quick decisions, they help him in the offensive line out. They help move the ball down the field. Um, but he also takes his shots. He also takes his shots. Uh, he tried for Rashad Bateman and it was a good throw. It could have been out a little, a little further in front of Bateman, but it was a pretty good throw. Uh, and Darius Williams just made shout out to him being a former Raven. But he just made an amazing play, amazing play on the ball. Um, but. Yeah, if him and Hollywood could get some chemistry, that'd be great. Uh, but, you know, Lamar, Lamar and Hollywood, that, that's, that's Lamar's guy. Uh, Bateman is his guy. And Bateman, I, um, it was looking like early on he was going to be, like, heavily involved. And I, I was expecting him to be continuously involved uh, in this game. Um, and he was early on, but things just... Uh, they changed a little bit uh, for Rashad Bateman. I'm just trying to pull up his numbers. Because um, I, I remember like five catches, I think. But I'm seeing exactly what he had. So he had uh, oh seven catches for 58 yards. Okay, decent, decent. Um, Mark Andrews, six for 89. There was a point where Mark Andrews had four catches for 81 yards. Uh, but then, yeah, all the big stuff stopped. Because, uh, so it's... Just one of those things. But, oh, one of my favorite things about Tyler Huntley's game yesterday were the timing routes. And, again, him and Rashad Bateman, they have a connection. They have a real good connection. Him and Hollywood do not. There was another play uh, at the very end of the game where he threw it to Hollywood. There was one play, yeah, where he threw it to Hollywood um, and <laughs> almost got picked by Darius Williams. Almost got picked. Um, there was another play uh, where it was, I forgot what court it was. I think it was in the second half, though, but where he, it looked like he was about to scramble, but Hollywood was by the uh, sideline. He, he threw to Hollywood, but he ended up throwing it short, um, and it, it just it went into the dirt. But, yeah, him and Hollywood's connection is not there. It's not there. Um, uh, they, and they can, they can get some. They, they can get some passes off now. Uh, and because there was one that he threw to Hollywood in traffic, it was behind. It was, I think, the first drive of the game, if not the first drive, then the second one. It was early, early on in the game. He threw to Hollywood in traffic, and Hollywood had to reach back and get it. But Hollywood got it. It was a nice catch. Um, but it's, it's the connection ain't there like that, like it is with him and Bateman. Um, but the timing routes, the time. Oh, I love to see that. Love to see it. And I just feel like um, Ravens. I feel like they they gotta take their passing game to another level their run game like and we're gonna talk about this later on in the week more in detail but their passing game it's, it's funny because i said this after the 2019 season i said all right what's next i said they gotta they gotta evolve in the passing game they have to it's, it's so important that they evolve in the passing game and 2020, all right, COVID year. Yeah. And it looked like they were trying to evolve in the passing game a little bit early on in the season. Then they went back to running. Um, but if you have, like, think about, something to think about. If you have Lamar Jackson, you get back J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, even if you get other running backs too. But if, 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 they, if you go into the season – with the running backs that are expected to be on your roster. You get your guys back. And that's whether you draft somebody else, you sign a running back, whatever. And you have Lamar Jackson too. Your running game is going to be just fine. It's going to be just fine. No matter who you have calling the plays. No matter who you have coaching the team. No matter, your running game is going to be just fine. So, just something to think about, but it's the passing game. <clears throat> the passing game is what needs to take another step. 
It has to. And it would just do the regular. And it seemed like it was heading in that direction for a little bit early on. Uh, but anyway. Um, and we know there's a lot of different factors that, that play a part, that play a role in the whole scheme of things. So, anyway, Ravens are 8-8, eight and eight, not in the playoffs as of right now. They're not eliminated. They would have to win against the Steelers. <laughs> That's tough enough already. Uh, Jaguars would need to beat the Colts. Um, Jaguars usually play the Colts pretty good um, at the crib. Uh, the Chargers would need to beat the Raiders, I believe. Raiders are at home for that. That's on Sunday Night Football. And it's one more. Oh, Browns have to either lose on Monday Night Football against the Steelers. And this game is obviously being recorded before then. Um, <clears throat> and if they don't lose, then they would have to lose against the Bengals the following week. And kind of wouldn't expect Joe Burrow to play because he, they said he was fine. But I think, I, I would think that after a little baby injury scare at the very end of that game against the Chiefs where they won and the AFC North champs, congrats to the Bengals. Uh, I would think that after that little injury scare that they got, that they would be like, mm, no, you ain't even going to play. Don't even worry about it. But you never know. So hopefully the, 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 the Browns just lose tonight to, to make the situation clear. But again, I know a lot of Ravens fans. Some are like, hey, we want to go to the playoffs. Anything could happen. Some are like, no, we don't want to go to the playoffs because it'll, it'll hide. It'll, it'll help hide a lot of the Ravens' deficiencies and they're just their incompetence and da 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 So I feel you. I, I feel you on both sides. Some people are like, oh, we lose, better draft pick. And I'm like, oh, well, Ravens, they probably would trade it back. But it's a lot of different scenarios. But we'll see how everything ends up playing out. Anyway, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And just like the Ravens, probably going to be when it comes to... You know what, what You know what somebody said? They said it'll be, it'll be just like the Ravens to where they get the help that they need from... Oh, yeah. And the, the, the... No. Before, it was that the Patriots would need to beat the Dolphins. Yeah, I think they still might. I forgot how it worked. Because some with Indianapolis uh, in the, the, the records and the ties and da 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 so, yeah, the Jaguars need to beat the Colts. Patriots might need to beat the Dolphins. Browns need to lose one of the last two. And the Ravens will need to beat the, uh, the Steelers. Um, but somebody was like, oh, it, it would be a, such a Raven scenario where everything that they need to happen happens, but they end up losing. <laughs> Tinky, Rick, clean, we out.